We're going to look at the four operations of radical expressions in this section. Addition and subtraction, which are done pretty much the same way. Multiplication and then division. So to add or subtract radical expressions, first we make sure everything is simplified. Every single radical is completely simplified. Then we combine like radicals. For example, add or subtract. Imagine this to be like a big X, and imagine this to be like a big X. So this is kind of like 5X plus 3X, which would give us 8X. So it's the same idea. I have five of these radicals, and then I have three of them, so I have a total of eight radical two for this problem, because there was nothing to simplify. Whereas for part B, I need to simplify this, and simplify that before I do anything. So I'm going to think of 8 as 4 times 2. I'm going to split that as a square root of 4, square root of 2. This is going to pop out a 2, so I have 2 rad 2. Then I'm going to think of 32 as maybe, let's say, 16 times 2. That's going to be square root of 16, square root of 2. That's going to pop out a 4, and then the square root of 2 and I'm adding these two, and again, since these are like terms, if they are like terms, like I had here, these were like terms, I have the same idea here, I have two radicals that are the same, so all I have to do is add the coefficients, and that's going to give me six radical two. So look at part C and D, again, add or subtract. So um, I have this one, which is already done, I can't do anything. The 12 I can maybe change into a 4 times 3, which will be square root of 4, square root of 3. That pops out at 2, so I have 2 root 3. I can do some simplifying for 27. I can think of that as 9 times 3. And then I have square root of 9, square root of 3. This guy pops out at 3, rad 3. So I have those guys, and then I have 2 radical 3. Now again, all the radicals are the same, so I just go ahead and add the coefficients. 2 and 2 and 3 give me 7 radical 3. Part D is a cube root, so we're going to go ahead and uh, split that up as maybe 8 times 3 would be good, because 8 is a perfect cube. And maybe this guy we will think of it as 27 times 3, because 27 is a perfect cube. So I'm going to split these, cube root of 8, cube root of 3, cube root of 27, cube root of 3. This guy pops out at 2, so now I have cube root of 3 stuck, plus this guy pops out at 3, I have a cube root of 3 stuck. And again, since these are like radicals, all I have to do is combine the coefficients. 2 and 3 give me 5 cube root of 3. Okay, let's look at a couple more. I have cube root, or actually square root of 25 and square root of x cubed. I'm going to split those. That's going to pop out of 5. This is 3x's, so it looks like 1x escapes and comes out in the front. So an x is going to come out, and then this guy is stuck. So that's the first term simplified. The next term is the same idea. I have three x's for the first two, one come out. So an x comes out and an x is stuck. And I have the minus sign in between them. Then for this guy, I have the x waiting. So let's have that wait. And then I'm going to take square root of 9 separately, square root of x separately. And this guy's going to pop out a 3 square root of x is where it is, and remember this was waiting also, so it's going to multiply on the outside and wait with the 3. Now, for as for like terms, these are the same, these are the same, um, and so is this, I suppose. We have 3 square root of x, so we look at all the coefficients. Remember, you have a 1 here, so I have 5 minus 1, that's 4, plus a 3, and 4 and 3 is 7, x, square root of x, is my final answer. Okay, part f, we're going to have this 2 wait, and I'm going to look at this as cube root of 16 and cube root of x cubed. Well, 16 is 8 times 2, so that's going to be cube root of 8, 
cube root of 2 and cube root of x cubed. This guy will pop out a 2. This guy looks like it's stuck. And then this guy is also going to pop out an x because it's a cube root and an x cubed inside. So I have this out, this out, and anytime you have things waiting outside, they're going to multiply with anything that pops out. So things that pop out multiply with things waiting outside. So I have 2 and 2, which is 4. The x is outside, and I will have a cube root of 2, which is this guy stuck. So x completely left, 2 completely left, multiplied, gave me a 4x, cube root of 2. For the next term, I'm going to think of that as cube root of 27 times 2. So that's a cube root of 27 and a cube root of 2. This guy pops out a 3. This guy is stuck as is. And then also I have this x that comes down, so I have 3x on the outside cube root of 2 on the inside, and these guys are being subtracted. Last one, 128, I guess we can think of it as cube root of 128 and cube root of x to the fourth separate. And then 128 is 64 times 2, so let's think of it as cube root of 64 and a cube root of 2, and then also a cube root of x to the fourth. This guy is going to pop out a 4 because there's three 4's under there. The second guy is stuck as is. And then this, there's four x's, so one x is going to come out and one x is going to be stuck behind. So ultimately I have plus 4 and x outside and then 2 and x stuck under the cube root. Now let's go look at our like terms. Definitely this is the same as this because it has the same radicals. But notice the last piece doesn't have an x. It has an x, but these guys don't have an x. So this is different. I can't add this with these first two terms because they're not like terms. So I have four of them minus three of them. That gives me one of them, whatever these things are, one x cubed. Um, cube 1x cube root of 2, let's make sure. So 1x cube root of 2 is what we have. And then the last guy is not like terms with the first two guys, so we just carry it down. And so we really have x cube root of 2 plus 4x cube root of 2x, and that's the best we can do. These two are not like terms. To multiply radical expressions, we sort of distribute like we did with polynomials and then we simplify. So for example, I have like a monomial outside and like a binomial inside that's going to be square root of 2 times square root of 8 minus square root of 2 times 3 square root of 2. These guys together merged will give me square root of 16 and then I have these two merged, so 3 outside and square root of 4 when I merge these two. That's going to pop out a 4. This is going to pop out a 2. There's a 3 waiting outside. So basically I have 4 minus 6, which is a negative 2 in this case. Let's look at the second part, or part B. I have a binomial looking thing and a binomial looking thing. I can simplify the square root of 4 right now, or I can just say I'm going to foil this out, multiply it out, and see what happens. So I have square root of 3 times square root of 4, and then minus 3 square root of 3 times square root of 2 for these guys, minus 2 square root of 5 times square root of 4, minus and minus give me a plus square root of 5 and square root of 2. Now the next step gives me square root of 12, or why do that actually? This is just going to pop out at 2 anyway, and then this is a square root of 3. So the next piece I can look at is minus 3 times square root of 6. It doesn't matter if you have square root of 2 first or square root of 3. It's still going to give you a square root of 6. Minus, again, this pops out at 2. 2 and 2 together give me 4, square root of 5. So again, what we did there was we multiplied these two guys that popped out. And then I have the last piece which is plus 6, square root of 5 times 2 is 10. 
So I have 2 radical 3 minus 3 radical 6 minus 4 radical 5 plus 6 radical 10. And it looks like all the radicals are different. They're not the same. So I can't combine any like terms and I'm done. To divide radical expressions, we rationalize the denominator. That's what it's called. And in doing so, our goal is to get rid of the radical in the denominator because if there is one in the denominator, it's not considered simplified. For example, divide, rationalize, or simplify all mean the same thing. If I want to simplify this and get rid of the radical in the denominator, I will multiply the denominator and the numerator by exactly what appears there. When I do that, I can merge these two and get a square root of 25. I can put these two together next to each other. And then notice this pops out a nice 5, which was my goal. So I have 2 root 5 over 5, and I'm done. Same idea for part B. I don't like this in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply the bottom by cube root of 2. But cube root of 2 gives me a cube root of 4 with these guys, so I'm going to need another one. And now things look better because I get cube root of... 8, and I get 5 times cube root of 4. So this guy pops out the nice 2 for me, and I get 5 cube root of 4 all over 2. If we have a denominator that looks like a binomial, then we're going to use the conjugate. For example, 2 plus root 3 will have a conjugate of 2 minus root 3. Here's what I mean. So since I have two terms in the denominator, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. And once I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and do my usual multiplying business and see what happens. So let's distribute everything. When I do that, I get a 4 minus 2 root 3, and in the bottom I get a 4, and I get those two multiplied, these two multiplied, and these two. And notice what happens, these guys go away. This guy pops out a nice 3, and I have 4 minus 2 root 3 all over just 4 minus 3, which is a 1 anyway. So I get 4 minus 2 root 3 over 1. Part B, same idea. I have a minus in the middle, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by a plus in the middle, the conjugate. And then from there on, I'm going to distribute and then distribute and distribute. When I distribute, I have all radicals, so they all merge. But this guy pops out a 5, this guy pops out a 2, these two cancel, and this guy pops out a 2 as well. So I have radical 10 minus 2 upstairs, 5 minus 2 downstairs. That's going to give me radical 10 minus 2 all over 5 minus 2 is 3. And there's nothing more I can do. So a quick review, if you have only one term in the denominator, you use whatever needs to be multiplied to get a perfect square out or a perfect cube out so the radical is gone from the denominator. If you have two terms in the denominator, then you use the conjugate so that nicely things can multiply out in the denominator, cancellations occur, and then the radical is magically gone from the denominator again.